I thought we were going to be sitting here. Okay. Oh, for the discussion. Okay. All right. Just a change of, uh, of venue. <laughs> the last minute. Uh, so, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here and uh, um, for uh, allowing myself and my colleagues to have this to engage in this discussion because I think it's important um, so and a lot of times we do things not necessarily not necessarily without thinking we do think <laughs> before we do things but uh, without taking the time to uh, look at what has been done and uh, and how our thought process has developed uh, from the moment we thought of it and did it and then uh, uh, and then thinking of, of the future and so on. So I, really the change of venue has really <laughs> took me by surprise, I have to admit, I was expecting to be sitting there. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just gonna get some water. <laughs> it's, uh, I think, a lot of, uh, of you who create festivals, you know, the change of venue at the last minute is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think DCAF is Downtown Contemporary Arts Festival. It's a four-year-old festival that I've created in 2012, <laughs> and that is a, an annual festival. As Catherine said, it's a performing arts theater and dance, music, visual arts, and film. Uh, and with a program, what we call special projects of lectures and talks and, and other things that don't fit maybe even within this, in these very defined uh, <coughs> art forms. Uh, we also have an urban visions program, which is a program of, of, of events that take place in public spaces, mainly contemporary dance, but they can <laughs> also vary to other things in public space in a wider sense, uh, which goes from the street to apartments or rooftops or, and so on. Now, um, I would say that the art of the curating is the art of, of opposites. Uh, in the sense that you always have to be the thing and it's opposite. But to say you're always managing that. That, for example, it's extremely important for me when, when I was asked to, do, to, to call this lecture by uh, Sigrid. I, you know, I came up with uh, curating in the time of the revolution. <laughs> uh, I think that if I was doing like a festival like uh, uh, Anya in Switzerland, I would say curating in Switzerland, <laughs> or you know, <coughs> Freiburg, or you know, uh, or if I was doing a festival, I don't know, in anywhere, it would, it would, I would call it according to the context. Mm -hmm. It's true that the revolution kind of seems like a, an important context, but the, the, why I'm saying that, because I think that context is extremely important when you're creating. Uh, you, it's very different to create a festival in Cairo now than to create a festival in Munich. Uh, not necessarily just a political issue, because a lot of us will go straight to the yeah, Cairo revolution, politics. It's not necessarily just that, it's a lot of factors that will interfere, for example, um, to give you a little bit of context, before DCAF, DCAF is a major festival, it's three weeks long, with events every day. Uh, before DCAF, Egypt did not have a festival of that size that is not run, fully run and organized and funded by the government, which we're not. We're completely out of, you know, we, we have very, very little funding that comes from our government or from the state or from the city or you know we're uh, <clears throat> so within that context making a festival and, and that's regardless of the revolution because we started thinking of the festival in 2010 we're supposed to have the first edition in 2011 in March of course we didn't <laughs> and we had it in 2012 so uh, just in that context you your approach to creating is different Okay, it's different than if you were working in Germany with a support from the city or from the state or from the state theater and so on. Um, second point, for example, audience. Again, 
Prior to DCAF, the only other performing arts festival was the Cairo International uh, Experimental Theater Festival, which maybe some of you have attended. I know Onkin Sen was there in, you know, uh, 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 some time back. And it, again, it was fully organized by the government, no curatorial policy whatsoever. And um, uh, it ended up like just a, a propaganda tool. So the, vi the, the concept of a festival for the Cairo or the Egyptian audience <laughs> was either something that is very, you know, uh, that was basically making headlines of 30 countries, 25 plays, uh, that's, that's basically it. Uh, you know, and then you will end up with, uh, I don't know, the National Theatre from Latvia beside some small company from, uh, I don't know, it, does, it didn't really matter because all the curatorial work was done on DVD by professors who one was American, one was British. So you can imagine the, the kind of thing you ended up with, especially after 20 years, because in the beginning there was some... You know, there was some euphoria about it, and then it kind of faded out. So the, fe the concept of a festival at that time was, was this, or a private festival. So Pepsi, for example, would hire a large space, I don't know, a football field or something, and they would build a stage and have all this loud, horrible stuff being pre pre presented. And that, for the audience, was a festival. So when you come and say, okay, we're going to do a downtown contemporary arts festival, people either thought of this or that. Uh, so within that, so this is what I mean by context. It's not necessarily political. It's not necessarily about you know, presenting things and being uh, uh, restricted by the politics or by, it's, it, it is a lot of other factors that, that, that form that context. And when I say it's the opposites, it's the art of the opposites, because I always believe that <clears throat> You need to be aware of your context and know it and work within it. So you need to be aware of the sense, not the sensitivity or the sensibilities of the audience in the sense that you don't want to hurt their feelings or show them things, but you need to, you know, when you're presenting <laughs> performing arts it, to an audience that hasn't seen what really happens in the performing arts for the last 30 years, you need to take their hand. <laughs> you can't just throw it in their face and expect them to kind of like, you know, automatically adhere to the, the contemporary way theater is, is being uh, done, uh, which is be very different if I was creating a festival in New York or in Paris. But that said, you cannot completely also just think of this context as your only, because then you would be limiting yourself on what you're presenting, and you'll be putting barriers to what, you know, what you, it's, it's, so it's just that art of, of managing that, managing these contradictions of needing to understand that context, okay, that can go also to, you know, the fact that you have no qualified staff in the art or in culture sector, that, you know, when you're thinking marketing or you're thinking, I don't know, uh, uh, any other, any of the fields that you need for to, to make a festival or PR, you're talking to people who their only experience would be private sector, ad agencies. None, you know, you, you, you don't have the selection. So these are all contexts that you need to be aware of and be managing, but at the same time, you can't let them <coughs> override or dictate your selection and uh, the artistic direction of the festival or else you'll be just basically feeding you know, you, you, you won't be doing any, adding anything to, the, to what's going on. And I think that this is the main motive, motivation, for, for me at least, for creating, not just to create a festival, or there is, a, 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 for me, a decaf, it's not just a festival. I was telling this to, to, my, to our team uh, before we ended the festival that ended, by the way, Friday morning, uh, mm -hmm. yesterday morning, so <laughs> at 3 a.m., uh, I was telling them that, you know, uh, we're not just doing something, you know, to uh, present theater and, uh, you know, and, and, and entertain people or just make them reflect on uh, what, good, what performing arts is or what music is or contemporary. We're not just doing that. This is maybe one of the, you know, on the list from one to ten, this would be maybe number six or number seven. What we're actually doing is I compare it uh, what we're doing to CBGB's in New York, which is that bar that, that kind of 
launched the Ramones and you know Patti Smith and <laughs> that you know we, well, this is this is the the bigger picture. This is why uh, I I started decaf with my colleagues. This is what we're doing. We're introducing a whole way of looking at the world through the performing arts and music and the visual arts and a whole way of doing things also. Uh, you know, uh, things starting on time, having a proper program, uh, things not being cancelled as much as we can, <laughs> and venues not changing. Uh, so all of this is it's a, a change of culture and a mindset, and that takes time to construct. So this is the thought behind it. <coughs> uh, there is a context, and of course, knowing that context is vital to be able to navigate through, but you always need to uh, to be adding something, I think. Not, not just for the desire of adding something, but it's just, otherwise we're just, uh, you know, we're a movie theater who's just playing whatever. You, you, you know, there is, you, you, you want to feel that you're building something for, for, for now, but also for the future, for people to reflect on or to, uh, to see things in a different way. Um, and in that sense, Abiding completely to the context, or completely being present in it, that will, st that for me, that stops you uh, from accomplishing that. Because you'll always be, oh, but what if this doesn't fit? Or on the contrary, you need to take risks, and you need to, to push boundaries, but you also need to, to, to be aware of the context you're in, in order not to alienate your audience from the beginning, and therefore, you know, you, you're basically cutting your, 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 your life short, or the life of the festival, and then you're totally destroying the, the initial idea you started from. Uh, I would say that this also applies to what I think we're creating. I think we're creating is a very personal thing at the end. At the end of the day, uh, I like many of my colleagues, I travel, watch performances uh, all year round, and then make a selection. This selection is a lot of it based on my personal taste and appreciation. I mean, uh, I, I don't go to a performance and pick it because it's, I don't know, it's German or it's French or, or it's I don't know, or it's contemporary, or no, I, I take performances because I think that they have, they have a value uh, that artistically I can identify with, uh, aesthetically or contextually, and, uh, or both, and that I would, and I think that presenting it to the Cairo or Egyptian audience would not necessarily add something, would add to the, to the ongoing discourse. Again, not necessarily the political discourse, because this is something that we're always, when we look at, at our part of the world, we're always thinking it has to be political, but everything is political. You know, presenting a good piece of theater that not necessarily talks about politics, but that gives people the sense of freedom is political, especially in our context. Um, it could be freedom, aesthetic freedom, that is political because it gives people a sense of freedom, and then you're really catering to the to their subtlety instead of their frontal confrontation. So, again, that said, it's very personal, but I feel all the time that I need to step out of the personal because it, otherwise I'm just you know showing. It, it's it's I'm not a, you know it's not like a DJ who's just you know playing what he likes, you know. It's, uh, it's more than that. You need to, sometimes, in, in, in a lot of cases, uh, use your own sense of, uh, of aesthetics and taste, but at the same time, you need to be outside of that. So again, you're the thing and it's opposite. You, you know, and I, I can't personally tell which is which, I mean, you know, but, uh, uh, but, but it's vital to, to look at it this way, or else it, I think it will become very boring, because you're just showing things that you personally like and that's it, and it, that, I, I don't think that works. Um, I think that, that the, the main issue would be aesthetics, which was something that uh, some of the speakers touched upon. And I could, it's easier for me to present Western or European or non-Arab work in the festival uh, than Arab work. And I'll tell you why. Because there is a, 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 a wide variety, a 
Okay, you know, looking from the out from the outside, uh, there is a wide variety of aesthetics, at least for me, in outside of the Arab world, especially in the Western world. Contemporary has a very different uh, impressions and expressions, and and you can really, you know, make selections and uh, have a list of things and start. You know, when you go back in, when when I look at in the Arab world, for many reasons that have to do with the um, uh, the, the the actual economy and actual structure of performing arts or of the arts, you know, uh, the lack of of, uh, of structures for production, for, di for distribution, makes it that the production is quite limited, okay. and the lack of openness also, not openness because the audience doesn't want to, to see, or the artists don't want to see, but it's just simply, you know, we're the only international festival that presents international works in Cairo. Cairo is a city of 20 million, you know. Any other city of that size would have 10 festivals with all contemporary, with all very different ways of presenting what contemporary is. Uh, so this limitation makes it that the Arab productions have, uh, there is a certain uniformity. Okay, and then you're in a dilemma of what, you know, you're a contemporary, you have your own way or vision of, of seeing contemporary that you want to believe kind of crosses Borders and nationalities. You know, you don't. You say you don't see the piece and say, "This is, I want to bring a German piece." No, you say this German piece or this piece is so what I think theater is today. Or uh, and then German comes second. You know, um, so you have that. But in the same time, you have that that whole uh, problematic that you're seeing works that very you know that looks exactly like the second work before it and after it. And that you know is extremely classical in, in how it, in its aesthetics, but at the same time, you don't also want to be a festival with no Arab works. So that is a very every year. It's a okay. Let aside, of course, the fact that you can hardly get any money to bring Arab works to Cairo, and it's always the biggest struggle every year is to find money to bring a Lebanese piece or a Tunisian piece. But this, but this is a very. Uh, that I think this is a very crucial issue for, for, for us, is how to um, accept sometimes that there are different levels, different aesthetics, uh, and not always bring also the very obvious, because you know there are a couple of names that are extremely contemporary, and they're all over. But you also want to, you just don't want to be stuck in there, because as an Arab festival, or an Egyptian festival, in the Arab world, you want to do something more than just present the very uh, contemporary works that are so obvious. You want, to, you want to look for something deeper. That's problematic. And um, uh, I mean, I would think that the solution, though, that's what we're trying to do, is to actually co-produce small, as much as we can, in order to solve that. But yeah. Um, I don't know, I mean, I don't really have that much to fill in 45 minutes. I mean, I can talk about a lot of things in 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm not sure that it all has to do with the subject, but, uh, you know, so. No, but I, I think um, another, um, I, I would say, just to switch a little bit also. A lot of talk was done, it was talk, a lot of talk was, was said about uh, um, visual arts and creating visual arts. And I think there's a fundamental difference between creating visual arts. Oh, it's obvious there is a fundamental difference between creating visual arts and performing arts. By the way, I only create the performing arts in my festival. I have colleagues who each in their section create their section because I'm, you know, I'm not a visual arts person, I'm not a music person. You know, I mean, I'm an audience of visual arts, but I'm not a creator, so everything has its... Uh, uh, but I think visual arts is different for, in my opinion, a very important uh, or, or maybe obvious uh, reason. In the globalized world, and in the last 20 years, there is a global visual language okay, that is easily accessible. You don't need to travel. 
You need to go anywhere. You could be in a village somewhere in Africa or in Egypt or in Southeast Asia, and you can access that global language. Okay, you can play the same game as the guy sitting in Dusseldorf, or you know, uh, or watch the same YouTube video or, or or installation. You see a part of it on, on the internet. So there is already some sort of a globalized language that has been in somehow infiltrated in our minds. And creating the visual arts, uh, dip, I, for me, depends a lot on that. And there is a whole tyranny of what is that visual language. And it's quite hard to get yourself out of it because it's there all the time. In performing arts, it's very different, especially in theater. Because no matter how your aesthetics can fit within a, a kind of a global aesthetics or a westernized aesthetics, there is an element of language that is always there and that, is, that actually makes, you know, puts a, a, a gap between the audience and, and the, the work that's being presented. You know? um, and I think that for me, this makes a big difference uh, from creating visual arts. I'm not an academic, nor uh, an intellectual, so, but this is my reflection on the subject. Uh, I don't know. Do you guys have any questions? I think I'm... <laughs>